Hello everyone and it's so nice to have you here at the Welcome to Music podcast for music arts and classroom educators in early childhood and primary elementary schools, music therapists, studio music teachers, parents and anyone who uses music with kids to support their well-being and development from 0 to 12 years. My name is Susie Davies Flitter and I've been teaching music to all ages in early childhood schools and universities over many years. With my husband Phil we run Welcome to Music where we create music resources. We have a membership community and present training and programs for kids and educators. Our goal is to help build confidence and creativity and enrich lives through the joy of music. I hope that this podcast can support and inspire you and maybe even make your job a little easier through sharing tips, chats, lesson plans, interviews and great quality music resources to use with your children. I use an inclusive, multimodal, multi-sensory and off-based approach to help make the learning stick. Please enjoy the Welcome to Music podcast and find us at welcometomusic.net. So, Christoph, Orf Schulwerk has been a very, well, almost like a passion for you, hasn't it? I mean, it is for me too. And I know that you are very involved in the IOSF, International yeah. Orf Schulwerk Forum, which is the board. I mean, you can tell our yeah. listeners more about that. I'd love you to just explain what kind of things the IOSF are working on and working towards yeah. and just tell us a little bit about that. Yes, thank you, Susie. Um, I, yes, and you are right. I'm still passionately involved in the board of the IOSF and there's actually an extra S there as well at the end. IOSFS, the International of Schulwerk Forum Salzburg, they call themselves officially. Okay. It's an association that registered as an association like VOSA in Victoria, it's registered in Austria as an inscribed association. And we are an umbrella organization that helps, assists, and if you like, can I use the word curates, looks after, 45 national or Schuberg associations around the world. So that's interesting, 45. Yeah. I always yes. wondered how many there were. Yeah. So look, of, of course, it fluctuates. You know, yes. some drop off, some new ones yes. come in. I mean, just recently we had an inquiry from Ireland who are trying to establish an off association. And this already brings me to the one of the points that we, we are doing. So. Some people, some teachers in a country say, I mean, I've been to courses in Salzburg or in Melbourne or somewhere, and I'm really touched by this idea of music and movement. How about I get another five teachers and we want to establish an association in our country, let's say in Ireland. How do we go about it? So that's where we get an inquiry. Our board receives an interest call. Somebody writes in and says, what shall we do? We would like to do this. So then we can then serve their needs. And how do we do this? Let me explain to you a little bit how we do this. First of all, of course, we have a large website with many different pages. And we have, obviously, we have an email address, info.iosfs at gmail.com. People write into us and we can serve their needs. We are an umbrella association that is not designed to tell people from the top down what to do, but rather to listen what their needs are and to find out how can we serve your needs? What is it that we can do for you so that you can successfully create music and movement association in your environment for your people, in your cultural context, in your language? That's what we're trying to do. We have a website with many pages. Our website includes ideas for teaching in the English language. We have a magazine in the English language. We have a yearly convention, usually in July. And up until recently, 
It either took place online or in Salzburg at the Orff Institute. Next year's convention will be already earlier in June. It will actually take place at a university in Prague in the oh, Czech Republic. Really? Yeah. So, yeah, we've decided to move it around. Yeah. Yes. Uh, we have a publication called Orff Schuhwerk today. And we have this publication online going back to something like 80 editions right back to the 1980s. So you can browse yeah. these documents that are largely in German, but always with some English translation. And lastly, can I say, we have a subcommittee on which I work on very hard as well. It's called the ASI subcommittee that is Associated Schools and Institutions. We have something like 18 schools or institutions around the world between Munich, Bangkok, Western Australia, San Francisco. These are schools who are devoted to our Schulwerk in their teaching. There are always some personnel who have studied at the Orff Institute or elsewhere of music and movement education, and they are dedicated to this style of teaching, and they have decided to be part of our uh, family, the associated schools and institutions. So these are some of the services that we have. And, you know, it's part of my character, particularly in my retirement, that I would like to be like every person. You want to be useful, don't you? You want to yeah? make so a difference. You Absolutely. want to make a difference. Yes. And, and we are doing that. Um, I mean, my time at the board will come to an end um, next July because we have decided that um, each board member has a period of time, let's say 10 years, and then we hand over to somebody else. And lastly, can I say to that topic, Susie, we are in the middle of a process of big turnovers where we vote for new board members that start next year in July or shortly after. And uh, that is a lot of extra work because you have people like Barbara Haselbach and others who are first generation co-workers of Karl Orff himself or have been invited to teach on his behalf, they are retiring like myself or have already retired and they will possibly in the future be advisors here and there, but we need to hand over all the history, all the things that you and I are now talking about, that all these data, if you like, all these information pieces, they need to be handed over where it is sensible and how it is sensible to the next generation of teachers who want to serve this idea. Yes. It's wonderful that you're looking after all those associated schools. And of course, yeah. we, we know some of, well, you know all of them and I know some yeah. of them. Yeah. Um, when you when you mention Western Australia, Mary Walton, who yes. has changed her name now, but mm -hmm. she has a school that is very much adopts that whole off approach and philosophy over in Perth. Yes, and we also have mutual friends over in China, Shumai. Yeah, uh, they have EMEA Institute of Music and Music Movement, and Movement Education. Education. Yeah. Association, I Association, think. Association, um, something like this, yeah. yes. Yeah, in, in Shenzhen, um, in South in China, Shenzhen. yeah. So it's been really good to hear that whole off journey and how you're really involved. What I'd love to ask you now, Christoph, is to share a couple of songs with us. It would be oh, so absolutely. lovely. And I know your repertoire is so wonderful and I just love mm. so many of the songs that you come up <clears throat> with, you know, and you have come up with over the years and uh, that have a, a beautiful world music, multicultural flavour. What have you got for us? The Welcome to Music podcast is brought to you by the Welcome to Music membership, where for a small monthly or reduced yearly fee, you can download all of the notes, music notation, ukulele chord charts and percussion arrangements for the podcasts, blogs, webinars and freebie Fridays. Have ongoing access to over 50 hours of music education and video recordings suitable for early childhood and the primary elementary school. Access over 50 hours of professional development certificates for courses, webinars and workshops. Access great discounts on events and products. And access hundreds of musical resources to use in your classrooms. Join us 
at welcome to music.podia.com forward slash welcome dash to dash music dash membership dash plan. Look, uh, uh, thank you for inviting me to do this. And, you know, in this medium, as best as I can, in a, in a little Airbnb room, um, let me say, the offshorework um, approach in Victoria and elsewhere often takes its cue from what happens around us, what, hap what happens around the families, the children, the teachers in everyday life. And coming from Europe right now, I've only been here two days in Taipei, um, you know, coming from Europe right now, I have to tell you, the place is on fire and it is absolutely terrible. And, you know, I could simply not talk about it, but it's important to talk about it because people in Europe are more affected by this. People in the Middle East near Israel are more infected by this. Um, than we are in Australia or New Zealand. Yeah, so it's important for me to think about that. And teachers in Germany would think about that. People and teachers in other parts of Europe would think about that, maybe in Australia as well. So the idea of peace and keeping peace and acknowledging the terrible things that have happened and are happening in the Middle East, that could be a jump off point for a song or not only a song, uh, an engagement with the words of a song, an engagement with the situation, a talk that might be difficult with children, but it is necessary to have. And to that context, I, I would sing and have sung and send to you the song Shalom, um, which simply exists of one word in five different voices. A way to teach is to begin with the bass line. Shalom, 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 shalom. Quasi ostinato, yeah, repeats itself. Yes. Whereby the last tone is actually an octave lower, but since I'm a tenor, I can't reach that. Yeah. <laughs> and then there is a main melody that goes over the top. Shalom, 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 shalom. And it continues on layer after layer, five voices. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, 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 shalom. Shalom, 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 Just mentioning it was created in the year 2000 by a British community singing leader, Nick Prater. He sang it in four parts. He created four parts in the key of C. Um, one of my colleagues in New Zealand, Julian Raphael, recreated the same song in five parts, added an extra voice and created in a slightly different key. But it's worth having and I'm sure you can share this happily. But it also brought home to me that um, maybe children and teachers and we as families need to also learn what can we do? How do we oh, create I this? I couldn't yeah? agree more, Christoph. And you hear all of these awful, awful things that are happening. Yeah. And that's, again, another reason I wanted to do this podcast, because I sort of feel, yeah. well, at least we as musicians and music educators we can we can make a difference just through sharing some beautiful songs about peace and love and yes. hope and healing 
Mm-hmm. So it, 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 it occurred to me, as you say, uh, that uh, one of my colleagues and friends, indeed, we studied together at the Orphan Institute in the 1970s, Wolfgang Hartmann, wrote a little canon that I'm sure he gives permission to use. Uh, I've already asked him that once before. He wrote it in 2001 on the occasion of 9-11 in New, New York. Yes. And in it tells us that peace can happen when people actually get fed, when they have food, when they have safety, when they have opportunity to live. And, you know, I think it's worth shining a light on that. It doesn't happen by itself. And it sounds like this. Peace begins when the hungry are fed. Peace begins when we see each other as a friend. May the peace begin. Peace begins when the hungry are fed. Peace begins when we see each other as a friend. May the peace begin. That works in a, as a two or three part canon quite oh. well. And it, it occurred to me, here is somebody who points out, okay, guys, here is where we can start. Let's find some food. Yeah. And, you know, I think that's something oh. that children can relate to as well. Yes. It's, it's at the basic needs need to be met before yeah. we can, yeah, do anything really. Yes. And, and uh, since you've invited me um, uh, about songs, it also occurred to me, you know, I should write something not only about shalom, but also the equivalent word in Arabic. Yeah, so because we all know that there are so many people involved in the whole region. And the whole terrible situation reminds me of what Daniel Barenboim, Barenboim great conductor, uh, does in Berlin with the East West Divan Orchestra, where he mm-hmm. has invited for decades now musicians from Palestine and from Israel to work together in an orchestra. So, um, you know, already in 2001, for the same publication that Wolfgang contributed to, I created this song. Shalom, asalam, peace, oh, 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 keep peace. Shalom, asalam, make peace, let's keep the peace. Deep peace, deep peace, deep peace. Peace, shalom. Asalam, shalom, peace. Oh, 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 make peace. Shalom, asalam, make peace. Oh, keep the peace. Asalam, shalom, peace, oh, 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 make peace. Shalom, asalam, make peace, oh, keep the peace. Deep peace, deep peace, deep peace, shalom. So we have here two terms for what we all want, at least two, even an English one, peace as well, three. Yeah? Shalom, asalam, and peace. And, you know, look, can I say, I invite my friends and colleagues, because I do believe in the power of this, to create more. Yeah, let's all write songs and canons. Absolutely. In and there's also a beautiful song that I've shared uh, in episode two, which is called mm. Salam, Christoph. Lovely. Um, Ojavo Shalom Aleinu, Ojavo Shalom Aleinu, Ojavo Shalom Aleinu, Ve'al Kulam, Salam Aleinu, Ve'akol Ha'olam, Salam, Salam. Very, very beautiful um, Indeed. And verse and chorus. So 
salam being Arabic for peace and all the yeah. other words are Hebrew also return us so that we can have peace. That's what we can do to try and make a small difference, at least, share oh. these beautiful songs. And in the end, the small difference might become bigger and bigger. You're so right. Um, I, I do agree with you. We add our voices to our voices. More and more voices chime in. It is music that we're making, but we will be heard. And more people hear it. And yes, it makes a difference. Thank you for that song, too. Yes, very, very beautiful. Written in Israel, it, a band called Shiva, something like 1997. So look, um, uh, maybe just one more point briefly. I mentioned before what a challenge it was for me after, after COVID, during COVID, towards the end of COVID, to actually move back to Germany for several months, for half a year, and then trying to dip into the cultural life there, the musical life, meet other music pedagogues and get involved having not been involved in German language on a cultural level for 40 years. Yes. What, you know, my neighbor next door has a two-year-old child, Theo, and I'm trying to sit down with him to sing German children's songs. Oh <laughs> my God, there's something I need to learn. So yes. I learned songs from colleagues and I learned some lovely German songs. And, uh, you know, I, I, one advantage I took, uh, for example, I'm going to sing you one more song that I learned as a German song and translated it into English in my way. Singing is like a warm summer wind. It brings joy and soothes hearts. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. The winds are moving, our voices are soothing all across our waters and lands. Singing is like a warm summer wind, it brings joy and soothes hearts. And on it goes, of course, as a canon as well. Singing is like a warm summer wind, it brings joy and moves our hearts. Singing is like a warm summer wind, it brings joy. The winds are moving, the voices are soothing all across our waters and land. The winds is like a warm summer wind, it brings joy and moves our hearts and land. Do 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 Singing is like a warm summer wind, it brings joy and roasts our hearts and land. Singing is like a warm summer wind, it brings joy and roasts our hearts and Beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing those songs. It's of course. A very, a very uh, special gift. <laughs> What's in store now for you? What does the future hold for you, Christoph? Thank you. Look, this is a great <laughs> question too. Obviously, there are personal um, uh, reasons that I come. I visit my daughter, Emilia, and her, her partner, and um, I visit friends. Nino and Joseph, with whom I had a trio with Georgian music. I visit you, I visit other off friends, or so I hope. Um, and, you know, I spent considerable time in Melbourne, in Australia, in Victoria, and I spent considerable time in New Zealand. So having the opportunity to participate in the off Schulwerk teacher education courses level 1, 15th of January onwards, is great. It's fantastic. I enjoy that. There will probably be other opportunities, possibly in Canberra or somewhere where I can contribute to this. But for Victoria and Australia, that's enough for, for December and January. 
Then in February, from the 17th to the 28th of February, I will actually lead and accompany a choir from Victoria who does a singing tour in New Zealand, in the North Island of New Zealand. The Heart Choir, as it was called, is moving to New Zealand, you know, on a 10 day tour. And together with Lala Simpson from Wellington, I will lead that choir from Auckland onwards on a bus every day to a different place. We sing there every night or every second night and do sightseeing in between till we arrive to Wellington around about the 20th, 28th of February, whereby my time there is finished. So the Off Association in New Zealand is cooking up other things for me in March over there, possibly April as well. Um, after my daughter's birthday, it's a personal comment here, mid, <laughs> mid, right. mid April or towards end of April, I will actually move back towards Taipei. And in May of next year, I will return to Germany. So that's the plan so far. Wow. And life has taught me, you know, be careful with all of that. You know, these are nice ideas and I'm very much focused on having it happen. But um, I'm also fairly relaxed um, about how things pan out. Oh, it sounds um, very exciting, Christoph. It really sounds exciting <laughs> in your retirement. So, yes. <laughs> well, you're Certainly. not really retired. You're still working a well, lot. We all are trying to make a difference and I'm trying to do that too. Yes. Absolutely. Oh, that tour in New Zealand sounds like so much fun. Wow. You're yeah. going to love that. You're going to yeah. absolutely love that. Well, we're kind of getting to the end yeah. of this interview and uh, there's so many more things I want to ask you, but yeah. I'll just have to kind of choose a couple of things. One thing that is so difficult here in Australia is to advocate for music and movement education. Sport is so important yeah. and so much money is put into sport and often schools don't even have a music program. Yeah. So please share your wisdom with us. Why is music and movement so important for our souls? And what can we do to advocate? Look, thank you again for that question. Of course, it moves me a lot because in Europe, it's also an issue. Yeah, the Europeans, the Central Europeans have an advantage in that they have rightly or wrongly respected and an enormous tradition in music an enormous cultural tradition. It's almost like um, if you grow up in a family in Germany and you don't play an instrument or you are not somewhere touched by, with your family, with that cultural tool, then something is not right. Yeah? And even if you have moved from Turkey to Germany and live in parts of Berlin, then you have your Turkish saz with you or some kind of Turkish music as well. So I guess what I'm trying to say here for participants is let's keep creating family culture. Yeah, let's keep creating the music culture in our families, amongst our friends, amongst birthdays, amongst parties, weddings, um, even normal social gatherings. Don't be shy to pull out your ukulele and just go for it. Yeah, so that's a basic starting point. Secondly, for teachers, to make it work, to get the recognition that in the end also gets the dollars into the music program in your school is try and connect any live topic that is pertinent in the school on this particular day, try and connect that with your music, with music. Yeah, if there is something that has happened in Victoria right now that moves the community, that moves the families, see whether you can find a musical item that links up with that. So for children, it is so important to see that what we are doing is completely related to the reality that we are meeting every day. So if my family suddenly talks about vegetarianism, okay, I will create you a song about eating no meat at all. Yeah, um, or some, I mean, look, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but you know what I mean? It is essential that we connect, um, you know, to everyday life. And, and can I say further, there are examples, like I've seen that in New Zealand, where we got some help from people who were very good at writing applications for funding 
We got them roped in and said, listen, can you help us write application for fund? We know there is money around. The government is looking to hand out money. We just need to have the right application that fits this funding, uh, these funding um, criteria. And we found somebody who did that for us. And suddenly we ended up with a fair amount of money that allowed us to do a whole lot of workshops in, in isolated areas of, mm -hmm. um, of New Zealand. Mm -hmm. So that's one other way of getting connected. But yes, um, I do agree, it's, it's a difficult issue everywhere. Um, you know, connecting music to the football grand final as it's done is a really good idea. To connecting music to, you know, the, uh, the Melbourne Cup day, if that is the case. Um, connecting music to that and pointing out to the children, look, did you hear that? What happened? What did yeah. they sing there? What, you know, making that connection to real life events. Well, my very last question to you is, if you had a superpower, what would it be and what would you do with it? <laughs> yeah, thank, thank you. Uh, I mean, look, I, I thought a bit about that question too, and it occurred to me that I'm just so passionate about listening to music, listening particularly to diverse music, you know, from re Renaissance to jazz, from rock, to DJ kind of digital music. I mean, what I'm trying to say is great diversity. If I would have a superpower, I would want to make sure that particularly early childhood places and schools would have listening to music activities on a regular basis during the week that shows the great diversity of music. And that allows the children with the help of teachers or other guiding figures to close their eyes at times, have a listen to this pattern. What happened here? Can you tell us what you felt? Can you tell us what happened here? Can you recognize any of the instruments that are in there? Can you recognize any of the voices? What are they singing about? So in other words, if I'd have a superpower, I would compel people to listen to music more deeply and listen to music in more diverse ways. We get so easily drawn into a particular style of music also because the world is so full of imagery, is so optic, you know, like we listen to music often now with some images behind it and that places us into a particular direction. No, no, let's be really diverse. You know, I wake up one morning and often in mornings and I listen to Baroque music. It really gets me out of bed. Yes. And then, you know, and then I find myself a couple of hours later thinking Blind Face was a really interesting band in the 1960s and 1970s when I went to disco dancing. I want to listen to them again. Yes. Yeah, you know, so the great diversity that music offers is magical. Yes. And I like more of that. Christoph, yeah. thank you so much. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You've just shared so many wonderful things about your journey, about music education, about off education. I hope that it's been really inspiring for our listeners. I'm sure. Thank you. Thank you. Great pleasure. Thank you, Susie. It's so delightful to be able to speak with you and to hear from you. And the way you invite me in is wonderful too. Thank you, Susie. This podcast has been brought to you by Welcome to Music, building confidence, creativity and enriching lives through the joy of music. In the show notes, you'll find links to a summary of this episode and our social media platforms. And in the blog, you will find all the notes and the links to this episode. Our goal is to help make teaching and learning music easy and fun for all. I use an inclusive, multimodal, multisensory and all-based approach to help make the learning stick. Find us at www.welcometomusic.net. Find hundreds of our songs on the streaming platforms such as Spotify and Apple Music. And again, search for our name, Susie Davis Splitter and Phil Splitter or the song title. And lastly, please join us in the socials on Facebook and Instagram. You'll find us if you put in Welcome to Music. If you have enjoyed this podcast, please share it with others and leave us a review. We would really appreciate it. 
Thank you so much for being with us. And I hope you have a fabulous rest of the week and weekend and enjoy Welcome to Music. Welcome.